Well, I guess you all heard about the closing of RU Siki Elementary and the foodborne illness outbreak. Yeah, I heard it was caused by a school cook who came to work sick. I heard it was caused by a pest infestation. Well, yeah. I heard it was caused by this kid. Enough. There are many pathogens that can cause foodborne illness. The investigators will let us all know the root cause eventually. Our main concern is that we follow our food safety policies and procedures. And most importantly, if you're sick or have symptoms of concern, that you let me know immediately. Then I will determine if you're excluded from work or restricted from certain duties on the job to prevent foodborne illness. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. It is critical that everyone understands the requirements for restricting or excluding symptomatic school nutrition employees. If you are experiencing vomiting, diarrhea, or jaundice, a yellowing of the skin or eyes, you will not be permitted to come to work. This requirement applies to areas where food is received, prepared, stored, packaged, served, vended, transported, or purchased. If you serve a population highly susceptible to foodborne illness, such as preschool children, and have a sore throat with a fever, you will be excluded from working in your kitchen. Otherwise, if you have a sore throat with a fever or an infected sore, you may be restricted from working with or around food. If you have been placed on restricted duty, you may work as a cashier, stock canned or packaged food products, or work in cleaning and maintenance outside of the production kitchen. If your symptoms were vomiting or diarrhea, you must be symptom-free for at least 24 hours prior to returning to work. Written documentation from a medical provider is required for sore throat with a fever and contact your local health department for information on returning to work after hepatitis A diagnosis. Exclusion requirements for school nutrition employees diagnosed with one of the big six foodborne illnesses is a must to protect your customers. Norovirus, salmonella, including salmonella typhi, also called typhoid fever, E. coli, shigella, or hepatitis A should be reported immediately. School districts should consult the local regulatory authority, such as the health department, in determining a return to work date. Hey, Brenda, you got a minute? Sure, come on in. Hey, I, I remember you said to let you know immediately if we had any symptoms before we got to work or once we got here. And I'm, I got a sore throat and I'm coming down with a fever. So what do you want me to do for today? I'm supposed to serve in a few minutes. I think to be on the safe side today, let's restrict your work to non-food duties. Why don't you cashier and I'll let someone else work the serving line. Sounds like a plan. Oh, Alicia, have you touched any food or been around the equipment this morning? Oh, no, I was just breaking down boxes for recycling. Okay, good. Make sure you wash your hands frequently and stay away from the preparing any food or using any equipment. Hey Grace, how's it going? Oh, I'm so proud you selected baby carrots. Yeah, I'm trying to improve my vision. What are you doing down here at the end of the line? They put me on restriction. Oh no, I hope they didn't take your cell phone away. Do the right thing for you, your team, and the customer. Exclude or restrict symptomatic employees. For more information on employee health and personal hygiene, visit our website.